Hi everyone. Today we're going to talk about organizational integration and why some companies get it right, but too many get it wrong. In this short video, I'll explain the best practices during post-merger and acquisition of organizational integrations. But first, let me introduce myself. My name is Phil Hofton, and I'm the Director for Business Development and Strategy at Nikisa. For over 20 years, I've helped organizations optimize their talent, manage technological change, and integrate organizations. One thing I've learned is that the value of any integration greatly resides in getting teams from both organizations collaborating very quickly. Organizational integration is a complex process. It's a mix of financial and talent challenges that sometimes requires difficult trade-offs. For example, retaining key leaders at high salaries versus mass reductions in headcount. What's more, during the integration, the pressure is on to demonstrate synergies as soon as possible. Often, actions must be taken quickly based on information that's far from complete. To make the whole process of integration smoother, let's explore some do's and don'ts. Let's start with things you should not do. Don't make it personal. The complex organizational journey should be based on company capabilities and goals, not on individuals. It should not be around somebody's personal history or existing influence in their organizations. You don't owe it to person A or person B to maintain their comfort level. You do owe it to stakeholders, including newly acquired talent, to create the conditions for success based on performance. This will inevitably lead to some difficult conversations, but don't let personal feelings influence your decisions. Focus on what's best for the company. On the flip side, you may uncover hidden gems that you didn't know existed through the traditional financial evaluation of the deal. Often, Pre-deal evaluations are limited to financial costs of return on investment, while the risks and opportunities from a talent perspective are underestimated. To understand them and bring maximum value out of the integration, reach out for help. There are partners who do this for a living and who can offer outside expertise, objectivity, and sound recommendations. There is a lot going on as you build the business, and business continuity should be a priority through the transition. Be humble, be open to new ideas. And the final don't. Don't ignore any feedback from leaders in the acquired organization. They know their people better than you do, even a year from now. Rely on them as advisors on how to get the most out of the talent that built that particular organization. They also have talent development plans in place that are invaluable in preparing the future of the integrated company. Now, let's move on to the do's of organizational integration. Do know what you're buying in terms of talent. Ask questions before you buy and evaluate the potential fit with the existing organization. People are by far the most important drivers of value in any acquisition. They represent assets that need to be understood across various dimensions. For example, their network in the market, their technical expertise, their career ambitions, their values, and their attachment to the current organization, and more. This information may not be easy to obtain as you go through due diligence. However, there are many other sources to get a better sense of the culture and talent landscape. These sources include personal networks, publicly available online resources, and consulting and research firms. At the very least, you should measure the factors that are predictive of talent success through the transaction. These are the same factors that need to be understood when we put in place succession and retention programs, for example. Another do, move quickly. Every moment counts in order to achieve the benefits of the transaction. There are three stages of organizational integration. Number one, cohabitation. This means that the acquired business units function essentially as they did before the deal and very few changes are made. The only difference is that now it is under a different legal entity. Two, integration stage. This happens when units within both entities start to integrate talent in order to reduce redundancies and duplication of effort. Ideally, it should happen at the same time as the integration of systems, tools, and business practices. 
Three, optimization phase. Once the organizations are combined, there is the opportunity to build something new, automate processes, upgrade systems, simplify the structure, right size headcount, buy, borrow, or bot talent. The problem is that too often organizations get stuck between cohabitation and integration. New organizations exist independently and autonomously while systems and operations start to merge. This is a difficult time for key talent since they don't feel as if they are part of the family and are concerned about the future in the combined organization. You also don't want to waste your time while moving to optimization phase since it will save costs and maximize the efficiency of the newly created organization. My advice is to have a clear plan for integration from day one and move quickly between phases. And the last, but definitely not the least, do. Dream. Take time to form a picture in your head of what the organization will look like in two or three years. What new capabilities will be needed? What will be the drivers of value? What will the workforce look like? What will be important to them as they build their careers inside the growing organization? The limitations will reveal themselves over time, but it's important to start with a target in mind and work backwards from there. There's nothing wrong with shaping an idealistic view of talent and organization of the future. Commercial, industrial, and economic reasons lead organizations to integrate large amounts of talent or conversely, separate out business units. But one factor that remains constant throughout all this consolidation is setting up the company for success. I hope this video will guide you during your organization integration and allow you to avoid many common pitfalls. Thank you for listening. At Nikisa, we are proud to support organizations all over the world who are dedicated to untangling the complexities of organizational change. Please follow our YouTube and LinkedIn pages for more valuable content. Feel free to add your comments and share this video with your colleagues. Okay. Pretty good? Perfect. Perfect.